This is a follow-on video to the one that I just posted today uh, entitled Bear Den Mountain. Just to refresh your memory, the quadrangle name that I used was Waynesboro East 1997. And this is Bear Den Mountain here. You can uh, go back and review my video. But in that video, I showed pictures of me searching for and locating this benchmark right here. There's a triangle right here on the map, and then it says D-E-N, Den. So that is the nickname, Den is the nickname for the benchmark that's up here on top of this mountain. Now, one of the things that you need to know, well, let's look at this first. So if you go to geocaching.com and look this thing up, you'll, you'll get this data sheet. It's two pages long and it's got a lot of information about where the benchmark is and the elevation and the GPS coordinates and so forth. If you look at a more recent map, this is Waynesboro East, same quadrangle map, but for 2016. And take a look at this diagram, you'll see that this is true north, and this is magnetic north. And the angle from magnetic north to true north is 9 degrees and 32 minutes. So we're going to round that to 10 degrees. So it's 10 degrees, the magnetic declination is 10 degrees to the west. So that means that if you give a bearing based on true north, you have to add 10 degrees to it to get a magnetic north bearing, okay? So true north plus 10 degrees equals magnetic north. Now the reason that's important is because when we get down here, we're going to use that formula. Up here, you'll see the designation for this benchmark is DEN, D-E-N. That matches what was on the uh, triangle map. This HW3342 is a database ID. You can look it up based on that also. Okay, and then the, this is the uh, <clears throat> GPS coordinates, 38 degrees, 3 minutes, 54 seconds north, 78 degrees, 48 minutes, 12 degrees west. Here's the elevation in feet, 2861. And if you put this into your GPS, you have to use the data reference NAD83. That's very important. So you would set your GPS to NAD83, and then you would put these coordinates in. And that'll give you their... Uh, current location for this benchmark. Now, the other thing is that when they put these benchmarks in, they almost always put in two or more reference marks, and they're down here in this little box. Okay, so here's DEN, den reference mark 1, and here's DEN reference mark 2. Now, Reference mark 1 is 11.4 meters away and it is at a bearing of 0, 014 degrees. I'm going to ignore the minutes and seconds. So this is four, uh, uh, a true north bearing of 14 degrees. So remember true north we have to add 10 degrees to get to the magnetic. So to go from true, true north to magnetic north, we have to go plus 10 degrees. So this reference mark is going to be, and convert this to feet, this is going to be 37 feet away and a magnetic bearing of 024. Reference mark 2 is going to be 40 feet away and this is a true, bear, true north bearing 129, add 10 degrees, that gives us 139. So, we've, so when we get up there, we're going to look for Dan 
and we're going to look for reference mark 1 and reference mark 2. And we know reference mark 1 is 37 feet away and a magnetic bearing of 24. And we know reference mark 2 is 40 feet away and a magnetic bearing of 139. Now it's very helpful when you go up, up, up there to draw yourself a little position map. So that's what I did here. And this is magnetic north. Here is the station Den. Here's Den reference mark 1, which is magnetic bearing 024, 37 feet away. And here's Den reference mark 2, 40 feet away, and the magnetic bearing is 139. Okay, so once you find this station, then you can dial up on your compass a magnetic bearing of 024, okay, and, and walk along that bearing, and when you walk out 37 feet, start looking around, and you should find this reference mark. Then come back to here, set your magnetic uh, compass to a bearing of 139, Walk in this direction, and when you walk out 40 feet and start looking around, you should find that reference mark. Now, if you're, if you're just wandering around, uh, because this, this area can be highly overgrown. That's the problem I had in that video, was it was totally overgrown. And one of the reasons I was able to find this was this statement right here. At the very end, it says that the station is at the highest point of the hill. Now, <clears throat> when these were put in, this would have been bare up there. All the trees would have been cut down and stuff. But over the last 50 years, of course, when you look at the video, you'll see it's, it's totally overgrown with pine trees and stuff. So if you happen to find, let's say, this one first. It'll be stamped DEN or M1. So let's say this is the first one that you find. Well, the bearing from here to here is 024. Well, that means if you add 180 degrees, that gives you a bearing this way, a back azimuth, of 204. So if you find this one first, then you would dial 204 into your compass and you would you would walk this way until you found this one. And likewise, down here, if you happen to stumble on the one that's stamped DENRM2 first, you would add 180 degrees to this, which gives you 319. So if you find this one first, dial in 319, and that's your back azimuth back this way. There's a couple of other things on here. For example, it tells you that this thing was monumented. It, well, first of all, it tells you it's set in a rock outcrop. So you're going to be looking uh, in, a rock, in a rock outcropping. And it was monumented in 1958. Now see down here it says that this was on a high bare hill known locally as Bear Den Mountain. Okay, well it's not a bare hill anymore. In fact, it's totally overgrown up there. Okay, and there's a couple of other hints. Reference mark 1, this, is, this paragraph talks about reference mark 1, and it tells you that it's at about the same elevation as the station. Okay, so that's another hint. So when you're looking around, when you're looking over here on this compass bearing, you want to look for terrain that is about the same elevation as here. Now, for reference mark 2, it tells you that it's about five feet below the station and it's in a large rock outcrop on the east slope of the hill. Okay, so <clears throat> this one that's five feet below, so you're going to be here and you're going to be looking in this direction and you're going to see this hill dropping off. So you come down on this compass bearing and when you've come down about five feet or so, start looking for a large rock outcrop. And for this one, you're going to walk along this bearing and you're going to look for, an, for a, a smaller rock outcrop about the same elevation as this one.
I hope that helps.